Hello, and welcome back to the Mindful Belly Don't Eat Your Feelings podcast. I am Ellie Rome, your health coach, and today we're going to be talking about raiding the pantry when you get home or going ham on the fridge after work. So this is something that I used to do every single day, starting in, when I was really young, like in elementary school. I would get home and just eat all the things. It was like I couldn't wait to get home to eat, and I would binge way beyond the point of fullness. I was eating things that were not in alignment with my goals, like once I started having health goals in like high school and college, and I felt com- really out of control, and I was using food to numb out. I was using food to have a breath, like I going all day long, stress, 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 and then finally getting home and just wanting to like an hour of peace, not to think about anything. And that for me was through food and food was my way of comfort was my way of just like, let me let the world go for a second and eat. And I want to help give you some strategies that really helped me be able to be conscious when I got home and no longer have that habit of getting home and just going like eating everything. So a couple strategies here. My first one is making sure that you're not hungry when you're going home. So I think one of the biggest reasons, especially when I was in the corporate world working, I worked as an engineer for Honeywell and I would eat lunch and then I would wait till, you know, I wouldn't go home till like six. And on the days that I didn't eat or I didn't bring food to the office, I would get home and just be ravenous. And it was like, give me everything that I can possibly put in my mouth right now. And even though like even at the time when I was eating like paleo, very healthy foods, I was way overeating because I was so hungry and I just wanted to, again, I was still using food to numb out, even if it was healthy food. And so by being able to give myself control by not letting myself get too hungry. So if this is the case for you, if you notice that's one of your patterns to set an alarm around three or four to eat something. And I know a lot of times we're like, go, 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 go. So having something really quick and easy, whether it's like nuts or nut butter or a bar, I like perfect keto bars are great. Or the, I know if you go to Walmart, you can find like an RX bar at least would be something for an emergency. Um, Look for a low carb bar, preferably that's not going to spike your blood sugar, but it's not just something to hold you over. You can even eat this on your way home just so that you're not getting home and completely stomach empty on like zero on your hunger scale and, or like a 10 on your hunger scale. And so try that. That's one step. Just don't let yourself go home starving. Um, Epic bars are great. Those are probably my favorite go-tos because they're great protein. I like the chicken sriracha one. It's awesome. And so yeah, have a bar, have some nuts, something that you're not going to go home starving. Okay. Number two, like I mentioned, a lot of the reason I was binging and overeating wasn't even necessarily because of hunger. It was really wanting to numb out. I had gone all day long, stressed out, or just go, go, go. Not even like stressed, like I'm, I was like, like in a negative way, but just very much high energy all day long. And it was like, finally, I get a moment to breathe. And I had just created conditioning in my brain where it was like, when I, like moments to breathe equated to also eating. So it was like, those things were coupled together. So if I wanted to feel comfort, if I wanted to have downtime, that meant eating. Like my brain just associated those two. So I had to work to disassociate that. And what really helps is finding non-edible forms of nourishment, finding things that can allow you to de-stress without food. And so creating a buffer, this really helped me. So creating a buffer between work and home at some sort of activity where before I got home, I was able to decompress somewhat. So I wasn't unleashing my stress or looking for so much comfort through food. So things like taking, you know, scheduling in a yoga class or some sort of workout class right after work where I wasn't going home until I did that thing, or honestly sitting in my car and just doing breath work, whether it's two minutes or five minutes of, I like the five, five, seven breath. That's where you inhale for five hold for five seconds, and then exhale for seven seconds. So inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Hold, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, five, four, 
seven, six, five, can't count, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So you just do that, you cycle it. And it's an incredible way to get yourself out of the stress fight or flight response and into your parasympathetic mode, which is your rest and digest response, which is how you want to be anyways when you're eating, when you go to eat. So it's great if you're about to go eat dinner, but it's a great way to get your body again out of that fight or flight into a calm state where you're not needing to go numb out with food. And so this is training. This doesn't happen overnight. It's reconditioning the brain to use other things for comfort. And so just notice like, oh, this is what I'm doing. Okay, I really want to go binge. Why am I doing this? Oh, what am I feeling right now? Oh, I'm feeling like hyped up and anxious and I really want to just calm down. Let me try using my breath first. And sometimes it's not telling yourself like, no, I can't eat. I can't have anything. Like you can absolutely go eat. But if you're just like, hey, brain, like, let's try this. Let me just try to breathe before I eat. And it makes such a powerful impact. And it may seem so small, but it is so huge. And you can do this at work before you leave or like you pull up in your driveway and just sit in your car for a second. Another thing I like to do is just listen to music before I go home and just like give myself space, five minutes of either like, I love EDM. So that really helps me. I'll just like dance it out. Or if you like calm music and just like sit and sit with yourself and breathe and scheduling just finding something maybe it's reading for you maybe it's going on a walk but i think so there's kind of a combo thing so if you're like the first thing about not letting yourself get too hungry well if you're starving it's gonna be really hard to be like okay let me just breathe for five minutes like that i know myself like there's no way that's happening and so have those kind of buffer snacks to hold you over so whether it's bringing something to work like a cashew yogurt or a, a bar or the nuts, like I mentioned, nut butter, something that can sustain you. Or maybe you bring like a, a little meal to work. I used to bring not only lunch, but I'd bring extra for like a, almost like a pre-dinner. And I don't encourage eating all day long, but if it's going to help you, help you to not go crazy on the fridge, like know yourself and try it. And it'll give you the, allowance to then pause so you're not ravenous because I know it's hard to pause when you're really hungry so and then go take do a yoga class or maybe pull up a thing on your phone a five minute stretch something to create a buffer between your day and your night so I hope this is helpful and if you need help or you want some more strategies for this let me know this is there's it's a lot about just tuning into what you're currently doing and then asking yourself, like, why am I doing this? How am I feeling about food? What am I trying to numb out from? And getting, if it is stress related, if you are really like overwhelmed and stressed when you get home from work, finding those little, using the breath throughout the day, not even just at the end of the day, but use it throughout your day. Schedule little alarms on your phone to just like sit and give yourself a breath so that you don't, you're not like peaking and just stress is just rising, 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 and then you crash where you're like kind of more ebb and flow throughout the day. So again, this doesn't happen overnight, but the continual practice, just little small things to focus on each day, adding in maybe just one day tomorrow, action item, add in a breath, two minutes of breathing cycles after work. And if you need help with this, DM me, call me, email me at mindfulbelly at gmail.com. Hope this was helpful. I love you guys. Have an amazing rest of your day and use your breath. Bye.